I really wish the Pick'em League was working, but it's not. Nonetheless, in this video, we are going to be breaking down every single game remaining in the NFL schedule, and we're even going to be writing them down so we can keep track of scores, see what the record is, see what the playoff spots is, while predicting every single game for the NFL. FL season for the remainder of the season. And honestly, this season has led to a lot of teams emerging positions that no one would have expected. Honestly, of the four teams that's never been to a Super Bowl, all of them stand a realistic chance to get there. And at least three of them should make the postseason, um, which I am actually pretty happy about. Thursday Night Football, we have Jets versus Browns. I'm going to be circling the team on my piece of paper that won, and I know you can't see it, but I predict the Browns are going to get the win here. Lions versus Cowboys battling it out on Saturday Night Football. The Cowboys might be a clueless team on the road, but they are a dominant team at home, and I see the Dallas Cowboys getting the win over the Detroit Lions. Titans-Texans. Well, I know that the Titans um, sh nearly beat the Texans. They took it to overtime. And he almost tied them on the, um, it, 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 you know, in Texas. I mean, in, in Tennessee. Now they're going to Texas, though. Um, I think that the Texans are going to be able to get this W, get things right back on track. I know that they lost last week um, by a lot, but they lost to the Cleveland Browns. The Cleveland Browns are a very good team, and I still think that the Houston Texans um, can at least pull away with it in Week 17. By the way, I don't know what any clinching or elimination scenarios are going to be for the week yet. Um, so I'm just going to say that their record, who who's, who, who I'm predicting to make the playoffs, I'm not actually in this video going to make any calls about who I think is going to be eliminated because the scenarios aren't going to be released until probably Thursday. So that I'm not going to take into account. You also have Falcons-Bears. Um, and honestly, the Atlanta Falcons, they beat the Colts. A serious playoff contending team. They beat the Colts on the road on Christmas Eve to keep their NFC South hopes alive. Do they control their own destiny for the NFC South? No. But the Falcons need a win badly, and I predict them to get it over the Bears, who are most likely going to be eliminated with a loss this week, and they could honestly be eliminated even if they win. Now we have Dolphins-Ravens. Now, the Dolphins finally beat the Cowboys. Um... And by them being the Cowboys, they got their first win over with a team that has a record over 500, at least over 500 the time they played them. We can honestly look at this and, and we see that the Dolphins beat the Chargers, but the Chargers are 5-10 and 10 and they're eliminated. They beat the Patriots, but the Patriots are 4-11 and 11 and, and they're eliminated. They put 70 on the Broncos, and while there were times where the Broncos had a winning record, they were 0-2 coming into this game, 0-3 leaving this game, and the Denver Broncos... Um, are still at a losing record now. They're seven and, and eight. Bills they lost to who had a winning record. Giants were eliminated in five and ten. Panthers are eliminated two and thirteen. They lost to the Eagles. They beat the Patriots again, but remember how bad the Patriots are. They lost to the Chiefs. Raiders are still seven and eight. Although coming into this game, I think the Raiders were uh, five and five, and that's probably what made the game so close. They were five and six exiting the game, as you could see. Be sweeping the Jets, but remember, the Jets are an eliminated team that has a 6-9 and nine record. Commanders are an eliminated team that has a 4-11 and 11 record. They lost to the Titans, for crying out loud, and now they just beat the Cowboys. But now they have to go up against an even tougher team in the Baltimore Ravens. Um, they're playing in Baltimore, and the Ravens just demolished the 49ers. Look at that game. It was not even close. It was a two-score game. For for them, the 49ers even got a team safety on them, and the Ravens still were able to overcome that to get a win. In light of that, I think that the Ravens are going to very easily be able to um, get this. And if they win, um, and if they win, they clinch the one seed because it would put the Dolphins down to eleven and five. It will bring the Ravens up to thirteen and three. So the Ravens will have a two game uh, lead heading into it, and it's all because the you know, the 49ers lost. Saints-Buccaneers, a very important battle to determine NFC South control. And I think the Buccaneers win it. I mean, the Buccaneers are just on a 
The Buccaneers are on a roll recently. They are on a four-game winning streak. They beat the um, they beat the the Panthers, Falcons, Packers, and Jaguars. And yes, they are all shoddy teams. But what, what makes the Saints any better than any of them? Like objectively, what makes the Saints better than Packers, the Falcons, or the um, or the Jaguars? What makes the Saints better than them? Pretty much nothing. I predict that the um, Buccaneers get the, get the win here. Patriots Bills should be a very easy win for our Buffalo team. Yes, they lost them last time, but they were a lot worse than they played in um in Foxborough. Now they're playing at Orchard Park. Cardinals versus Eagles. Um, Cardinals versus Eagles. I predict the Eagles are going to get the win here. Again, we played a very ugly game against the Giants, and we still haven't improved. But I have faith that the that first of all, the Cardinals are a worse team than the Eagle than the, than the Giants, and the Eagles pretty much beat up on on ourselves. If we, as long as we're more careful in how we play, and we don't have to make risky plays like that, like to be honest, at least two of the touchdowns the Giants got were, were pretty much gifts. In one case. We fumbled that when two player Eagles players bumped into each other on our own 14 yard line, which is a very easy touchdown for the Giants to get. In the other case, um, we we had to throw a second and 20, and we had to throw very long, and the Giants were able to get a 76 yard pick six because he because the person who's supposed to be defending him pretty much fell on the ground. The other touchdown was a 69 yard touchdown pass when the Giants had just punted and they were able to get it immediately. And honestly, the fact that our defense was not able to stop them, it's pretty embarrassing. So I'm, I'm not going to say that all three touchdowns were gifts to the Giants, but at least two of them were, at least two of them were presents to the Giants. Um, and I really think that, uh, that you know, the Eagles are out of our losing streak. We have some momentum going for us. We have a lot to fight for. I think that we can win this. Now we have Panthers, Jaguars. I think this is a game where the Jaguars can get better. I know the Panthers recently beat the Falcons and they almost beat the Packers, but I still think that I have enough faith in um in Jacksonville that they can get out of this mess with an AFC South title on the line. I have enough faith in them that they can win this game. It's going to be played at home, and I think that this is going to be like one of those very important get well games, similar to the ones that the Eagles had this week. Um, I think it's finally time that Jacksonville can pull themselves out of the, out of this mess. Raiders taking on the Colts. Um, so you have a resurgent Raiders team, and I mean like a resurgent Raiders team um, that's still seven and eight and has a low chance of getting into the postseason. And they must beat the Colts to keep their playoff hopes alive. If they don't beat the Colts, I don't know if they're automatically eliminated, but it's very likely they'll, that they will be eliminated from postseason contention if they lose. You have the um, the Raiders, the Chiefs making a comeback against them in Week 12, and then them getting shut out by the Vikings, but they held the Vikings to a single field goal. Then they put 63 on the Chargers, and now they just beat the Chiefs in Arrowhead. So, you know, I, I, I just don't know. In this game, you can clearly see that the Raiders had the early lead, but the Chiefs were able to make the comeback against them. Um, but I still think that um, that the Colts have have more to fight for and that they're a better team. And, you know, I mean, like the Raiders actually prevented the Chiefs from winning the AFC West title. But a win by the Chiefs or a loss by the Raiders or Broncos will guarantee the Chiefs win the AFC West, and I think that they clinched the AFC West this week. Rams, Giants. Um, the Giants are honestly a pretty good team. They're playing at MetLife. I know the Rams are, um, you know, they just beat the Saints, who squished the Giants recently. But it's been a very weird season, and the Giants, even though they're eliminated, they've actually been playing tough recently. So I'm actually going to predict the Giants to get an upset here. And Rams fans, please don't kill me. I hate the Giants more than you do. But I'm just going to be nice and predict them to get the upset. Now we have 49ers Commanders. Should be a very easy win for the 49ers. Um, Steelers Seahawks. The Seahawks absolutely, you know, had a miracle against the Eagles. 
And then they won by the same margin against the Titans. The Titans, for crying out loud. Um, when you, you when you look at the Seattle Seahawks, you know, the Eagles had a, t- had a touchdown that was reversed, and then they had to settle for a field goal. If not for that, I'm not saying Seattle would have automatically have lost, but they would have had to have gone for two on that miracle touchdown pass, and it's still all it would have done was tie the game. I think that um, I think that all these times the Eagles, we think that they score touchdowns, they don't, and then they have to walk it back to a field goal. It just it just makes everything a lot worse for our Philadelphia team, and um, and the Steelers. Maybe them being the Bengals by three scores is going to help them come out of this mess. I know playing in Seattle, I'm still predicting the Steelers to um, get the W here. Um, if you look at Steelers versus Seahawks predictions, um, you know, and you look at Sportsbook Wire, um, many of them are predicting the Seahawks to win. I'm going to say the Steelers get the win just because I feel like. They can come out of this mess. They can come out clinging, and they can be frauds all they want. But they actually have a good chance of getting to the playoffs now. Pretty much all they have to do is win out, which I know it's going to be very, very difficult. But I have enough faith that the Steelers could beat the Seahawks because Mike Tomlin is going to drag the team to 500 no matter what. Bengals Chiefs. I'm predicting the Chiefs to win because even though the Bengals have looked better recently, um. Jake Browning did not have a good game against the Steelers at all, and while Mahomes didn't have a good game against you know the um, the Raiders, I feel like I feel like this is going to be a game that with the hatred between both teams, even if it's not f- from Burrow, I feel like the Chiefs are just going to be able to win and recover from their mistakes from last week. Then we have Chargers Broncos, a must win game for the Broncos who have very little postseason hopes anyway. But they must win if they want to keep their playoff hopes alive. And in this game, I'm going to predict the Broncos to get it. I know that Shaw just put up a fight against the Bills, but now that they're eliminated from the playoffs, they don't really see what they have to fight for anymore. And um, and um, that's why I think that the um, Denver Broncos are going to be able to win this game out. Finally, our Sunday night football game, you have Packers versus Vikings. Um, you have Packers, Vikings. And my prediction is that the Vikings get the win here. Yes, I know they just lost to the Lions, but they beat the Packers on the road. They should be able to beat them at home. And I just and honestly, if the Green Bay barely beat Carolina, I just don't have faith in that team anymore. So at the end of week 17, the Browns are going to be winning, which would put the Cleveland Browns up at 11 and f- up at 11 and 5. It would knock the Jets down to a 6 and 10 record. Um as far as Lions Cowboys, the Cowboys would, f- would improve to 11 and 5, which yes, the Cowboys are the same record as the Cleveland Browns right now. The Lions in this case would fall also to 11 and 5 and the Cowboys would have head to head should it come down to that. Titans um versus Texans, we have the Titans who are going to be falling to 5 and 11, the Texans improve to 9 and 7 with a win. Falcons um Bears, you have the Atlanta Falcons improving to 8 and 8, the Bears who are almost certainly eliminated from the playoff contention, they fall down to 6 and 10. Dolphins um, versus Ravens. You have the Dolphins fall to eleven and five. You have the Ravens improve to um, twelve to thirteen and three. Saints Buccaneers. You have the Saints um, fall to seven and nine, which is a likely elimination for them. Buccaneers will improve to nine and seven and actually have a winning record when they clinch the division. Patriots Bills. I think that you, with the win, I Patriots fall to four and twelve. The Bills will improve to ten and six. Um, Cardinals Eagles. We have the Eagles improve to um, even if it's just a vintage. You know, the Eagles improve to twelve and four. Cardinals will fall to three and thirteen. Panthers Jaguars. I, th- I my prediction is the J- Jaguars will get to nine and seven, whereas the Panthers. 
Panthers fall to a 2-14 and record. The Raiders will fall to 7-9 and with a loss, while the Indianapolis Colts will improve to 9-7. and This is a must-win game for both teams, especially the Colts. Rams, Giants, I think that we're going to see the Rams go fall to 8-8 eight and eight and the Giants improve to 6-10. and ten. I think that 49ers versus Commanders, and we're going to see the 49ers improve to 12-4 and four, with the Commanders falling to 4-12. and 12. I think that Steelers, Seahawks, the Seahawks are going to fall to 8-8 eight and eight, and the Steelers are going to improve to be a 9-17. and 17. Bengals, Chiefs. That would mean that the Bengals are going to fall down to an 8-8 eight and eight split record, while the Chiefs are going to have the much-needed improvement and get themselves up to a 9-7 and seven record, which, again, is just laughable, considering that's the Kansas City Chiefs and that they uh, – oh, wait, no, 10-6. and six. But if they lose, they would be 9-7, and seven, which is an absolutely laughable record for the Chiefs. Honestly, 9-6 and six as it is is still a very poor record for the Chiefs, considering, you know – just how good they started to the Chiefs. Chargers will fall to 5-11, and 11, I predict, and the Broncos will improve to be an 8-18. Eight and 18. Finally, Packers fall to 7-9 um, and, and almost guarantee elimination. The Vikings will improve to 8-8. Eight and eight. Now that we've set the stage for Week 11, we have Week 18, we actually have to predict the Week 18 games. Um, and again, it's going to be hard to predict week 18 games without having played week 17, but I'm going to do it anyway, because I just want to, I want to show you what I think is going to happen to these teams and their records. And I wrote everything down beside me. So I, I actually know what I'm talking out of and I'm and they're not pulling stuff out of my ass. Now we have bears Packers to kick off that week. Even with the Packers being eliminated, I just don't see the bears winning the, that game, especially in Lambeau. Um, Cowboys Commanders. The Cowboys won the last time the Cowboys played the Commanders, and I'll actually show you in a second. It was just an absolute shit show for the um, for the Commanders. Like like it was one of the most viewed TV games because it was played on Christmas. Um, the Cowboys won forty five ten, and yes, the Cowboys had the home field advantage. But you look at it, Washington tries to actually make it a competitive game. Um, and, you know, going into halftime is still a 10-point game. But then the Cowboys come out actually dominating in the fourth quarter after there's no scoring action in the third quarter by either team. And they put on 25 against the Commanders in just that quarter. Yes, it was at home, and now they're playing on the road. But the Cowboys don't totally suck on the road. As a matter of fact, when they shut out the Giants, that was on the road. They are winning against the Giants at home, while still a very good win was less. It was less of a it was less impressive. You could see that they beat the Jets at home. They lost the Cardinals on the road, but they sh- squished the Patriots at their own home. They did get squished by the 49ers oh, oh, as the away team, but they beat the Chargers on the road. Um they beat the Panthers on the road by a pretty convincing amount. And you honestly look at it, they struggled against the Seahawks at home. So they're not totally clueless on the road. I know that they're kind of clueless on the road, but the commanders are so bad, and I know that they upset them week 18 last year, but I just see the Cowboys winning this game. Broncos, Raiders. This has a potential to be an important game. Probably not. Um, both teams could very well be eliminated by then. It's being played in Vegas. Vegas beat them the last time. Now Broncos are better. I'll just pick Broncos because... um. Just because I, th- I have enough faith that the team has improved and it might be worth something. Um, even if it's very unlikely to matter. Jaguars, Titans. I think the Jaguars are going to get this W right here because the Titans suck. Texans, Colts. This is a very good game. It's such a good game that I honestly see this being a game that could be flexed into the Sunday night football spot. And Sunday night football in week 18 is always going to be a game that has um, relevant playoff implications. Um, like, for example, last year it was Lions-Packers. It had a ch- the chance to determine which one of those two teams is going to make it into the, um, into the playoffs 
But if the Seahawks beat the Rams earlier, it would still be, could the Packers get the playoffs or would it go to the Seahawks instead if the Lions won? Um, when you have, um, you know, when you have the, uh, what's it called? When you have the other case, um, uh, 2021, you know, that was Raiders Chargers. That determined who got the last spot. Was it, would it be the Raiders? Would it be the Chargers? Would it tie and kick the Steelers out of the postseason? You have the uh, 2020 where the uh, Week 18 game was um, Eagles versus Commanders. You know, determined did the Commanders clinch the NFC East or the Giants at 6 and 10 still clinch the NFC East? Um, the 2019 Week 18 Sunday primetime game. Um, just to put a little more perspective into it. Um, she let's look at 2019 NFL games. And this is the last I'm going to look back at. Um, but in 2019, you see these NFL games. And um, and you see the last game was 49ers versus Seahawks. Um, looking at the standings from back in 2019, and yes, this is 2019. So I know that this looks weird. You can see... Um, you know, the 49ers clinched the division 13 and 3. The Seahawks are left to be 11 and 5. But, um, but, you know, wait, this is the 2023 schedule. What the fuck? I need to look at the 2019 Seahawks. You look at the 2019 Seattle Seahawks, and, um, and you, you know, you see that, um, that they beat the 49ers earlier in the season. So had they won, they would have both been 12 and 4, so that, that game actually did determine the NFC uh, West title. Where did the cap go? Uh. Well, I think I'm going to throw it a Sharpie after this video. But in any case, Texans Colts could be one of those games. It could determine the final wild card spot. If they win, there's so much on the line here. It's being played in Indianapolis, and the Colts did beat them in Texas, and I think that the Colts have so far been playing just a little bit better than the Texans. They had to come back from being down more, and the Texans were kind of one of those teams that um that came into prominence immediately. The Colts didn't, but they're still surprising people, even though they're losing more now. So I'm going to give this... Critical win to the Indianapolis Colts. Bills, Dolphins. I know that Josh Allen is a Dolphins killer, but with the potential for, you know, the the AFC East to be on the line, I think it's going to go to the Dolphins. Um, I just think that the Dolphins have more to fight for. Eagles, Giants, but this time in MetLife. This is a game that I'm actually very nervous for. I'm going to pick the Eagles, but I'm scared for this game. I could see the Giants winning the Week 18 game, but now they're eliminated. They have less to fight for. They could, of course, fight to get the Eagles out of there, but Giants also have to know that if they kick the Eagles out of there, um, you have to deal with the Cowboys, and it's guaranteed to be one of those two teams because the Giants and Commanders are both eliminated from playoff contention altogether. Seahawks... Cardinals, um, I think that the Seahawks are going to win this game. Should be a pretty easy win for the Seattle team. Vikings, Lions, I think that um, that the Lions are going to win that game, considering that the game they just played with the Lions clinched the North was supposed to be the game in a series the Vikings won. Now I think the Lions sweep them. Falcons, Saints. Um, Falcon Saints, the final game. Um, this doesn't really have a lot of potential to matter at this point. I think that at this point, the Buccaneers probably would have clinched the um, NFC South. I think that a win and they clinched the NFC South. Um, I'm not sure how it would work on division tiebreakers, so let me just look that up. Um, based on divisional tiebreakers in my previous analysis of this, um, the Buccaneers win out week, uh, 18, which I predict them to do. We'll get to that later. Then they're going to get it. Should they lose, they 
fall. They have a four and two conference uh, division record. Falcons in this case would um would also be four and two if they beat the Saints. They'd both be nine and eight teams. Um, but the Buccaneers still have a better uh, co- conference record, so I think that honestly the Buccaneers are just going to clinch after Week Seventeen as long as they get the win in Week Seventeen, which I forecast them to do. In any case, I just. It's being played in New Orleans, so I'm just going to go with the Saints because I, I really just don't know any better. Um, they've both been playing kind of iffy, but, you know. Jets, Patriots. I forecast the Patriots to get the win here just because the Jets have not beaten them since 2015. I know the Broncos beat the Chiefs and, and whatnot, but you have a scenario where the Patriots aren't good. They're very bad this year. They're 4-11. and Jets are, are not good this year either. Six and nine. They built their whole team around Aaron Rodgers, and one day, and once he got injured, they were pretty much screwed. Yes, they did go on a streak there in October. Um, I think they won almost pretty much almost every single game that they played in October. But the Jets um, had a very good defense, and they were going up against relatively shoddy offenses. Now they don't have that anymore. Now, uh, you know. Now, you know, they're just, like, back to being a really bad team. And I honestly could see the Jets, um, you know, still sucking with Aaron Rodgers because they have so many problems to fix. Uh, I could see Aaron Rodgers very easily getting injured immediately into the game again. I really don't know how it's going to work. But um, but I just don't have any faith in the Jets for the near future, especially seeing how Aaron Rodgers failed on them miserably. And I see the Patriots to – are going to beat them. Now, with my results from last week that I predicted, um, did I really not put the Patriots on here? Oh, no, I didn't. They lost the Bills. So with their loss to the Bills, they can't actually finish at a higher place than the Jets, which I'm sure the Jets fans will be very pleased about. But, yeah, both these teams are trending in a negative direction. I think that... The AFC East is going to become a Dolphins Bill show for a while, unless Aaron Rodgers can actually stay healthy for at least like twelve games, which I highly doubt. He's just too old to be playing football. You have Steelers versus the Ravens. I think it's going to come to the Ravens are going to win, but the Ravens might already clinch the one seed at this point. And with their win over the Dolphins, that would I think give them the one seed in the AFC. So they might want to rest their stars. I mean, they have a bye, and of course they hate the Steelers. But, and honestly, I kind of have enough faith in the Ravens that they could beat the Steelers back up. So I'm still going to go for the Ravens because they might not rest their starters after all because they, you know, will have a bye. So it's not going to be as important to them. They might rest their starters. And honestly, even even if they rest their starters, they still might beat the Pittsburgh Steelers because, um, you know, because the because if the Ravens rest their starters – they're still a very good team with some of the backups, um, seeing as how injured they've been and how they've been able to overcome all that this season. In any case, Rams, 49ers could be a similar case. They could clinch, but it would involve a 49ers win plus a loss about the Eagles and Lions. And I see the Lions losing and the 49ers winning, but I also see the Eagles winning. So I don't think the 49ers would have clinched the one seed yet. I, I do think they're going to clinch it, though, with the win over the Rams. Now you have Chiefs versus Chargers. I know people have been saying as to how the, the the inevitable split is going to happen. It's being played in L.A., but Raiders and Broncos are both better teams than the Chargers, and honestly, both the Raiders and Broncos are honestly closer in level to the Chiefs at this point than they are to the Chargers. I'm not saying that, the, that those teams are good. I'm just saying the Chiefs are not that good this year. But I still see the Chiefs beating the Chargers just because the Chargers are like the LA Chargers and they suck. Um, they're also five and ten um, now, and they forecast them to fall to what I forecast for the LA Chargers. I forecast them to. Um, I forecast the Chargers to. Um, where did I put them? I put the Chargers to lose them, and they'll be five and eleven heading into this game. I have the Chiefs winning, so they'll be ten and six heading into this game, 
which is a big reason why, again, I, I personally predict that the Chiefs get the win here. But I would not be that surprised if the Chiefs lose. Buccaneers, Panthers. This could be a game in which, um, you know, the Buccaneers rest their starters like last year. I'm going to go for the Panthers, actually, because I think that Panthers have been getting better recently. And this could be a game where the, if the Bucs have already clinched the NFC South, um, which I think they clinched the NFC South with a win over the Saints. Um, you know, um, they might just want to rest their starters and get healthy into the postseason. And um, I could honestly see the Packers, I mean, the Panthers beating them in this game. But he has the caveat. I predict the Buccaneers to win this game if they still have not secured up the NFC South. Looking at the Week 17 NFL clinching scenarios, which I just want to look at now that it's actually relevant, um, the Buccaneers and Chiefs will clinch, can clinch the divisions this week. Um, and the, Of course, the Ravens will clinch it with a win. Um, Browns get in a playoff berth. Um... How can Buccaneers clinch division week 17? And you know, when you when you look at this, if the Buccaneers um win next week, You know, it pretty much guarantees a playoff berth, according to the New York Times. They're at 100% to make the playoffs. Um, so, I think that, honestly, the Panthers could wind up winning because, again, I just don't see the game mattering at that point because I see that... Um, and, of course, I predict the Falcons to lose to the Saints, and that's not going to help anything either. Um, so, you know, I, I think that if, if it doesn't even matter... The Buccaneers might want to rest their starters, especially because sometimes if they locked up a seed, they still play their starters to get their division rival kicked out of the playoffs. But the Panthers are already kicked out of the playoffs, so they really have nothing to fight for. Finally, you have Browns versus the Bengals. It's being played in Cincinnati. Cincinnati has not beaten a single divisional opponent this season. And for that reason alone, I have enough faith to think that the Browns win this game. So when you combine it from last game, the the Bears, who are six and ten, fall to six and eleven. Packers, who fell to seven and nine, now improved to eight and nine. Um, the Dallas Cowboys, with their win, it's enough to put them at twelve and five. The Commanders, with their loss, they are going to fall to four and thirteen. The Denver Broncos will improve to nine and eight. Under the scenario of a win, the Raiders they fall to seven and ten. The Jacksonville Jaguars are going to be able to improve on their record and head up to ten and seven. The Tennessee Titans, um, a team that has been just sucking all all this year, is going to fall to five and twelve. And I think that, honestly, 2022 and the collapse of the um, Titans really, really just marks a transition point, um, a turning point for the franchise from when they were good to now that they're sucking and they're really bad. I'd, li- I'd like to say the same thing about the Jets with their collapse, but honestly, it's to the Jets were a playoff-worthy team at one point, and then they stopped being a playoff-worthy team. Um, but... You know, sometimes you, you like to look at turning points, and you can't always make the comparison depending on how the teams do prior. But um, but th- but those are my only thoughts on it. The Houston Texans, um, who I had beating the Titans, are now losing their nine and eight. In the Indianapolis Colts, who I also had winning, will improve to ten and seven with a win. The Bills' loss is going to be costly to them. And then moat them down to a 10 and 7 rank. Whereas the Miami Dolphins in this scenario are going to, to um to in this case be a 12 and 5 team. The Philadelphia Eagles should improve to 13 and 4. The Giants will be 6 and 11 to finish off their year. 
the Seattle Seahawks, the Seahawks, finishing off that year nine and eight, whereas the Arizona Cardinals, um, whereas the Arizona Cardinals are going to finish off the year at where did I put the Cardinals? The Cardinals are going to be finishing off the year three and fourteen. The Minnesota Vikings finish off the year eight and nine. The Lions, the Detroit Lions, will finish off the year at twelve and five. The Atlanta Falcons are going to finish off this year with an eight and nine record. And the New Orleans Saints, the Saints, will also be finishing off the year with an eight and nine record. The Jets will finish off the, this year, uh, a pretty miserable year for the Jets, to be honest. The Jets finished off this miserable year with a six and eleven record, whereas the Patriots will actually improve, I think, to um to a five and twelve record. Which is still one of the worst Patriot seasons in history, especially considering the, the, the dynasty that they once were. Pittsburgh Steelers fall to nine and eight, and the Ravens improve to a fourteen and three record under the best team in the NFL this year. The Rams, the Los Angeles Rams, um, who are actually losing to the Giants. They're 8-9. and nine. The San Francisco 49ers will improve to a 13-4 and four record. The Kansas City Chiefs I have finishing off the year not that strong, but 11-6, and six, whereas the Chargers, um, you know, the Chargers I have finishing off a 5-12 and 12 record. Buccaneers I have finishing the year at nine and eight. Panthers I have finishing off the year at three and fourteen. Finally, Browns Bengals. I have the Browns finishing twelve and five. And the Bengals, the Cincinnati Bengals, I have finishing eight and nine on their season, which is actually kind of what um people predicted the Bengals to do ever since Burrow got out. It's just that the way that it's going to happen for the Bengals, I predict, is going to be more heartbreaking than normal. So, we don't have a lot of time left in this video before I have to go, but, you know, now I think is a time where we can actually like, seriously begin to almost look at, um, at who is going to make the playoffs. And I'm going to use my updated sheet here. We have in the AFC, the Ravens are the one seed at 14-3. and three. The Dolphins will be the two seed with a 12-5 and five record. Um, Chiefs do get the three seed with their record to end off the year being 11-6. and six. And the, uh, what's it called? And the Jaguars... I do think that they will get the four seed, finishing off 10 and 7. The Browns will be getting the five seed with a 12 and 5 record. But remember, winning a division guarantees you a top four spot in hosting the wild card. From here, it gets a it becomes a very, very ugly mess. Um, that you you know you just gotta sift through. Um, you have the Colts at ten and seven. You have the Bills at ten and seven. I think that's all the tens I see on this. I'm pretty sure it's all the tens I see. On this besides the Jaguars ten. So they're gonna be the last two spots under my current scenarios. This involves um, the Colts winning out. So the Colts would have a division record heading up, finishing up the season. I mean, the conference record finishing up the season at 8-4. and four. The Bills would be 6-6. Six and six. So I think that the Colts can clinch the sixth seed at 10-7. and seven. 
and the Bills will be stuck in the seventh seed at ten and seven. But honestly, don't complain, Bills. You had a very shoddy season, and no one thought you'd make it into the postseason, and you will. And I think that, and I think that it wasn't the season that you wanted, but but I I still th- I still think that um you know the Bills can make it work somehow because they always do. I have the 49ers getting the one seed at 13 and four. The Eagles get the second seed at 13 and four. Remember, um, when the 49ers and the Eagles played head to head this year, we saw the 49ers squish the Eagles, and because of that, that's what's going to give them the higher seed in this circumstance. We have the um, next up is. Detroit, which finishes twelve and five, and you have the Buccaneers, who finish with a nine and eight record. Heading into the other teams, you know um, the Cowboys are going to get the five seed. They are a pretty strong twelve and five team. Do I see any tens? Okay, so. I think now they honestly are in the nine and eight territory now. No, I have the Rams missing out on the postseason, going eight and nine. I think I don't know. For some reason, when I look at nine and eight teams, the only team I see is the Seahawks. But I know a lot of teams we control a tiebreaker over them. Yeah, there's so many. There's so many eight and nine teams. I think the Seahawks literally get the sixth seed, even though they only go nine and eight in my book. Honestly, my predictions are probably a little bit harsh, and they're probably not going to come true. But they are valid predictions, and I think that we see the seven seed. It's going to be a whole mess of teams who are at eight and nine. And yes, I do think that eight and nine is going to be good enough, just because of how bad the NFC is. Um, you know, you have the Packers who are going to be eight and nine. You have the Rams who are going to be eight and nine. You have the um, You know, you have the um, Vikings who are 8 9, the Falcons at 8 9, the Saints at 8 9, for crying out loud. <sighs> and it just gets very confusing very fast. Now, Falcons versus Saints head to head. Falcons won, so if the Saints win this game, it would come down to a division tiebreaker that would settle it. Um. And with the head-to-head tiebreaker between the Falcons and the Saints, you have um, you would have it come down to be a to conference record, which honestly I don't know how Falcons versus Saints tiebreaker would work. Um, you know, as of now. You have the Vikings above the Packers, and I think the Vikings will be able to keep the Packers down. Vikings are ahead of both the Falcons and Saints. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to play out. My brain can't handle <laughs> this amount of confusion. I, I just, I, I feel like the Vikings have the most momentum out of any eight and nine team, and they have the highest chance of winning a tiebreaker. So I'll just go with them, even though I might not actually know how a tiebreaker works. So looking at my webcam, I don't know if you can see it very well. But this is what my official prediction is, and I know it's backwards. There's no way I can show you it forwards. I just want to show you what I wrote down, even though um, even though you really can't see it. So this would mean that in the in the playoffs, the Ravens would have a first round bye. You'd have Bills versus Dolphins, um, Colts versus Chiefs, Browns versus Jaguars, and the NFC. The 49ers have a bye. Vikings versus Eagles, Seahawks versus Lions, Cowboys versus Buccaneers. I feel bad for the Lions with the knowledge that with my predictions, they have a very good chance of, of losing a very close game in the wild card round. But I am happy that the Eagles get to go up against the Vikings. So we should be able to get the win here. And I and the Lions fans, if you lose to the Seahawks, I'm very sorry.